right guys, I just want to take a minute and share some information here on the striper migration and how you can use it to your benefit to catch the biggest stripers you've probably ever caught. And lots of them. So uh, we're going to start here with the Chesapeake Bay. Okay, This information goes to pretty much every bay on the East Coast, the Delaware, the Raritan, you know, up through Boston, Gloucester, the whole area, anywhere there's a bay or backwaters. Uh, this is just the Chesapeake Bay. Okay, this is Virginia down here. Maryland is up near the top. So if you can picture up in this area, you know, Delaware Bay and further up northeast. So when the water cools down in the fall, these fish come all the way down the coast. Okay, the cold water pushes them down. So they're looking for that water above 45 degrees, roughly. You know, I've caught them down to 39 degrees, but in that mid 40 range is, is a really good prime number there. So as they come further south, if the weather is stable, they'll hit this very warm rush of water coming out of the bay, flowing out of the bay. Once they find this warm water, they typically will not cross over warm water to go looking for other warm water. They're going to hit that warm water and turn up into it. Now as they come up the bay, the upper bay is cooling off as well. So this colder water is pushing down. This goes all the way up you know, to Baltimore and where it's very cold, all the rivers feeding in. So this water gets very cold and comes down. So you have the, the, you know, the cold up here coming down, hitting the warm water here. So you have cold, cold, see? Two bands of cold coming down. This cold is pushing resident stripers down. There are lots of big resident striped bass in the Chesapeake Bay because all year you know, long it's uh, very uh, pleasant for them in lots of places. So a lot of resident fish stay. Typically the migrating fish is what you want. They're the big girls. The big girls seem to find the biggest urge to migrate. That's why uh, a lot of resident fish that stay over are smaller. So again you have cold, cold. These fish turn up into that warm water and you'll find that band. Now structure is not nearly as important as temperature here. Temperature is everything. You may find the sweetest looking rock pile in the world, but if it's a few degrees too cold, there won't be a striped bass on it. They're keying on temperature and the bait that is keying on that temperature. So as they come up, they feel that warm and they're gonna go until, whoops, it's too cold and they'll stop. Again, some residents will be around, but for the biggest fish, they're going to stay in that warm water and they'll stop at that area. So you got to find that band of that perfect temperature. It may be only a few miles, it may be 20 miles, depending on the, the rain and the temperatures we've seen, if it's in snow or, you know, whatever. Every year is different. But most years are, uh, are the same, in the same way. So they're different, but the same. You can really count on this. So what happens is I'll launch anywhere up in here. I mean, it could be anywhere, depending. You know, 10, 12 years ago, 14 years ago, we would launch down here and we wouldn't leave this area. I haven't fished in this area in, my God, probably 10 years or so because the fish have just been moving up further and further. Our winters have been warmer. So when you, when you launch any of these areas, you're looking for that, that temperature. You know, if you're down over here and the water's in the upper 50s, you know, launch a little further north. You go a little further north, you're going to get, you know, maybe maybe you're getting a little closer, maybe 50. You may have to come all the way up here or even a little further, even past this reel up in here to launch to get out here to the bay to where your uh, temperatures are the best, depending on the time of year. So it could be anywhere here, and it's a huge bay. And I do the best always on this coast here, on the eastern shore. A lot of guys do the western shore. A lot of guys like to troll out here. But for my big fish, my migratory fish, the big girls, fish over 50 pounds. I like this side of the bay. It's a very long stretch, but you're looking for temperature. So for me to give you a spot to go to, it won't really help all that much. And that's why I feel comfortable sharing all this because, you know, some, you know, local guys, I don't want them to worry about me burning a spot because there is no spot. There really isn't. We've caught them everywhere in here. It's depending on the temperature. So look for temperature and the bait. You know, a temperature number in your head, you know, you can't really get a precise one all the time. I'm going to say between 42 and 50 degrees, but you got to look for the bait. So that bait will hang in that same temperature that the stripers like. All right, so now let's say you cruised around, you found the massive schools of bait. That's where you're going to start fishing. Once you've done that, 
I like to fish along contours, always going with the tide. The tide's coming in, I'm pulling my eels north. The tide's going out, I'm pulling them south. I might jog sideways a little bit, but never, ever, ever against the tide. The idea is to move as quickly as possible. You're not gonna mark a lot of these big fish. You'll mark some of the small fish, but these big girls are cruising high in the water column. Every single one we hook is immediately at the surface. They're only a few feet below. They're migrating, they're moving fast, and you have to cover water and get a big spread out there. It's not about finding structure in tight little areas. You gotta keep moving. These fish are coming down and they're coming, piling in, they're piling in, they're piling in, they're spread out. You have gotta keep moving, and that means going with the tide. Don't try to stem the tide. Uh, you can jog it a little bit, you know, if you have wind crossing the tide or something like that. But try to move as quickly as possible while still maintaining a nice presentation. So I pull eels close to the surface. I use inline planers. I use my trolling motor to move along, but you don't need a trolling motor. You can use your gas motor to get them spread out and then just drift with the wind, or if it's favorable, or you can use your gas engine. I know guys that pull pull the reels quite fast, use their gas motor all day. So I'm gonna do a few more videos. I'm gonna do on the Raritan Bay and on the Delaware. Stuff up way up north too as well. But this is a good idea of how to catch the biggest striped bass of your life. It's the big migrating girls. Now at the end of this video, I'm gonna add some clips showing you how I actually put lines out, how we pull our baits. And uh, they're at the end, so if you want to get out there and try this, if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. This is just the Chesapeake Bay. This works on every bay. So when it gets too cold down here, you know, they're going to go ahead and move down near uh, the Outer Banks. When it warms up here too much, they're going to be up in Delaware. So this is works for every bay. And again, guys worrying about spot burning. Everyone knows the Chesapeake is great for striped bass. And there's really no spot to go to. It's just a massive area. Finding that temperature is key. So if you want to watch till the end, I'm going to go ahead and put in some info on how we put you know baits out how we pull them how we rig them and it's about these contours i like to stay near a contour it doesn't really matter almost most of the time what contour you use but i don't really like big flat areas unless there's just so many fish out there and that's where they are we have caught them on big flats before down over here especially but if you hang on these little contours as you go that's money thanks for watching guys Stay on, on here to watch the rest of the video if you want to see how we're rigging. Appreciate you watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Give her all the thumbs up if you like the video. Love you guys. I mean it. All right, guys, real quick before I get to how we set our spreads and all our specifics there, I wanted to show you this light that's on sale here for just a few hours today till midnight. Fantastic navigation, nighttime navigation for a boat. This is the light I've been looking for. I'm doing a video, I've been doing a video for a while now on nighttime navigation with radar, without radar, and how to use lights and stuff like that safely. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the light here that I'm gonna be using in it. There was a, a Warrior that came out before this that I really like, but this is the new one, it's even better. 2250 lumens, 600 meter throw. I mean, it's almost like 2000 feet or more very tight beam high candela it's great for nighttime navigation and it will not kill your night vision by lighting up the deck around your feet very important you know a big floodlight that lights up around your feet will kill your night vision it's no good so you got a nice holster here a sheath magnetic okay Got a great heat sink around here because it does get hot. It's 2,250 lumens. That's a 90,000 candela. That means it's extremely intense. The higher the candela, the better it is for nighttime navigation because it's a super tight beam. See how tight that is? I mean, that's fantastic. I know it's hard with a camera to see, but it's a very tight beam. Shines very far. Great for nighttime navigation. It's also a tactical light, so you can use it with your weapons if you like. It has a you know your magnetic pressure sensitive switch here so you can put a remote switch on for for a weapon great for police great for security you know home uh, use you know search and recovery great great light it's got a uh, magnetic charging i'll show you some of the goodies here real quick thanks for staying with me on this all right so it comes with a lanyard tactical 
ring here if you want to replace this one because it's kind of sharp this is like a gel kind of it's very soft if you want to put it on your weapon or actually I like this one better than this even from my hand and of course the O lights are for phenomenal lights they have magnetic tail cap charging see that great light love it great for nighttime navigation this is gonna be my go-to for nighttime navigation because it's so tight and like I said it'll shine very far a lot of throw won't light up your feet around your deck there and kill your night vision they're doing a bundle right now this is only on sale till midnight tonight so you got a few hours to get on this so I got a little late on this one sorry about that this one here the i5t 300 lumens this little guy you have low and then you have high pretty bright light it won't start a fire like this one this one you can start fires with but it's a great carry light just drop a triple a in there it lasts a long time it's really cool light this one will be on sale until the second february the second and i think all the money from this is going towards the uh coronavirus that's why they have the blue on here the knurling so you want to get on that i'll go ahead and put the uh codes down there in the description and the link in the description if you click my link you can get this stuff on sale in a bundle it's like 30 percent off or more you can get them individually if you like and I'll also put a coupon code in there for other things because they have a lot of the great lights on there that aren't on sale so if you use my coupon code you get 10 to 20 percent off and that's uh i really appreciate that guys if you take a look at those for me you're gonna love them great lights oh has been fantastic all this lights they sent me are just awesome so let's go ahead and move on to the striped bass big girls fish off fish off fish off Yep, pick it up, crank, pick it up, crank. You're doing good, bro. You got one inside. I heard a tick, 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 tick. Oh, something's on this one. Double! Come on, John. Oh, boy! <laughs> you got it? Yes, sir. He's a lot high. Hooked up! Hooked <laughs> up! Oh, my goodness! Oh. Tick, 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 tick. Oh, something's on this one. Double! Come on, John. Oh, boy! <laughs> You got it? Yes, sir. He's right high. Hooked up! Hooked <laughs> up! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You set a waypoint on this one. Wow, John. <laughs> we didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to have to move this one up a touch because you might. Holy cow. I have to slow us down. <laughs> that might be your one right there, buddy. <laughs> I'm gonna put this down. Sorry, guys, you're gonna miss this. Bring it to me. Oh yeah, that's the one. Oh my! God. Oh no, son! What have you done? <laughs> That's a 54 inch fish, at least 52. 60, 60 on the dot, 61, 60 on the dot, 60, a little over 60, <laughs> 60 pounds, John. He can't even stick this one out to make it look bigger. <laughs> no force perspective here. <laughs> All right, let's get her in the water, man. Let's get her in the water. Yes, sir. Good job, 60 pounds, John. I never got one over 60. Beast. Beast. Walk backwards. Get him, John Hart. In the net. In the net. Woo! Good job, buddy. All right, let's clear this up. We got a mess and a half here. Kyle. <laughs> 50 pounds, buddy. I'm proud of you. You did really good. It's your first time monster striper fishing, other than the lakes. On some smaller fish. Congrats, brother. You got a 51 and a half and a 50. Legit. All right, John, we're gonna give her a little more time. How pretty is that? Oh, yeah, she's thrashing. Can't get the grip out of her mouth. Swim away, girl. Nice. Greatest feeling in the world. Whoa, I missed. 
<laughs> Get a fish on right here. Come on, John. Got it? Hold the right eye over the top of this one. <laughs> I called it. Wow, that's a monster. Let it go, John. Keep your eye high, buddy. Sweet! Come on back. I'll put that camera in. Oh, stay on him. Stay on him. <laughs> <laughs> on the reel, the big fish. Jeez, look at the reel, Kyle. So what you got, John? Eh, we're fish. You know, you know how it goes. Stripo Grande is what we got. Stripo Grande. Did you see that fish come up and smash behind the board, John? Yes, sir. His first fish, just oh, like that. We're trying to get this green <laughs> float out of the way, and that fish is just taking line. This one a little too heavy to stick out. <laughs> <laughs> tell you you're gonna pull forward and pull that disc at the same time okay. and you're gonna pull forward to pull it out of the mouth. Okay. Pull forward hard. Okay. Man is that pretty or what? Oh that's so cool. Congrats. Thank you. Baby boy. Good job cop. Fish, fish, fish! Get it cop, get it cop. Rod high, rod high. Smoker, son. Smoker! Hooked up! Head first and hard. Head first and hard. Lift. All right, don't let, leave him in the water. Leave him in the water. Out of boy, Kyle! Out of boy! That is a GI ant. Oh. Look at the lice on him. Look at that big girl. Uh, 52? 52. I'm gonna show you how we put our eels on. I go from the bottom lip up through the top. Some people go in the mouth at the top, but I like getting both lips. See, he's holding it with the rag just around the shoulders here. That's where you wanna grab it. And we're gonna go up through both lips. And as soon as he's hooked, in the water as quick as you can. Because if you hold that eel up on the, if you hold it, he will turn backwards, he'll come up, he'll wrap around your hand. You see how he's starting to work already? He will completely tie a knot and just wreck, wreck your day. 
So we're going to go ahead and put the board out. Hold the board. Eel goes in the water. These full clicker on. Hold the board. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And I grab the line from the rod tip here. Do the old little twist. There's a meal slime. Put it in my release. Okay. That's it. Let it out. Get a nice full spread. Just keep some tension on it. And it'll come out away from the boat. Right now our trolling motor is almost completely dead. We've been trolling all day long. But it's, it's running just enough to go with the wind. But fish were not touching anything today. Less than 1.5. We had to keep the boat moving quick. These eels will swim and just try to get to the bottom. Uh, you don't need much weight. As long as you go less than two miles an hour, they will fight to get to the bottom the whole time. Three glass beads above your swivel as that eel fights to get to the bottom. The rocking of the boat pulls the, the boards up and down and rattles those beads really nice. And this big wide open water like this, it really helps those big fish hone in. You can't use plastic beads, they will not work. And use at least three glass beads. It makes a really nice noise. I don't like a lobster or a crab clicking, just any kind of forage, you know, makes that noise and helps them find these baits in these big wide open areas, you know. We lock up the reels in the rod holders just like this. We don't, you know, we don't let the fish run or anything. Circle hook, these are offset circle hooks. These are the uh, owner of Mutu, M-U-T-U. Love these hooks. You just slowly take the rod down, slowly take this striper stealth rod down load that hook in the corner and that's it pick up the rod and fight the fish no yanking no setting the hook just put them in the rod holders get the boat moving about 1.5 miles an hour for today sometimes we go really slow sometimes we crawl sometimes we, we move quick today they liked it quick mike whacked one a little over 50 pounds today first fish over 50. congratulations mike all right we're out here in the chesapeake bay we're pulling boards and floats for big striped bass here and uh, what we do is we want to pull with the tide. It's very important. This whole style of fishing is designed to cover water quickly. Find these big rogue bass that are close to the surface. We barely ever mark them on the fish finder. And when we do, they're usually smaller fish. So, you know, we don't actually have to run around and mark fish like we do normally. This was, we want to mark bait at least. These are big rogue fish. We rarely get doubles. Happens sometimes, but pretty rarely. And what we want to do is go with the tide. I don't care what your tide chart says. Get out here on the water, put it in neutral, and sit for two or three minutes. Don't worry about the waves. Don't worry about the wind. Watch your chart and see which way you're, you're drifting. That's the way you want to go with your boards. Put your trolling motor down. Our tide was taking us at about five tenths of a mile an hour. So I'm pulling us at about one, 1 1.2 and go with the tide that's the most natural presentation these fish are facing up the tide they're not facing down so they're facing up and they're going to watch bait come over them i'm adjusting the trolling motor on to be. it's very important if you're fighting the tide you're stemming the tide you're not covering water it's totally defeats the purpose something like that can be the difference of a two fish day or a zero fish day so i don't know if you can see our spread three boards on this side we have two planers Planer floats, two West planer floats, and you can't see their way out there. And three of the uh, Zach Royce boards on that side, my buddy Zach. Then we have two TOS planer floats. You can see how close these rods are together. Those reels are, I don't know, three or four feet apart probably. And uh, I don't know if you can see those floats out there. There's an orange one and a green one. And you can see they are a good, geez, it's really hard to tell in this distance, I'd say 40 foot apart. So from four foot to 40 foot, just by letting about, I don't know, 100 feet of line out. So uh, that's how we're doing it. And you can see we're not marking any fish. We're not marking fish at all, just bait here and there and that's it. The fish today came off the board closest to the boat. This camera makes that board look farther than it is. It is probably 20 foot from the boat. 50 pound fish, biggest fish, 50 pounds, came on the board closest to the boat, only 20 foot away. 
and that tells me that that fish heard the noise of the boat and was attracted to the noise of the boat. You know, these are migratory fish. They come from way up north right now. They can be up, you know, this fish could have been in Boston a little while ago, come back down, you know, Massachusetts. I mean, it could have come down from a, you know, a Gloucester, whatever. And it came all the way down here and they see all kinds of commercial fishing along the way, clam boats and bunker boats, and they hear the noise of the boat. And I guarantee that fish heard the noise of our boat. The board was close to the boat. The bait was close to the boat. He heard us making racket and that's what brought him in to, to, to take that eel. You know, a lot of times they would be quiet, be quiet, no one runs the motor, they hush, hush, and I was I was like that too. And sometimes that's the way to go. But in the salt water like this, these migratory fish, I swear they like the noise. They like the noise, slamming hatches, you know. Guys pulling nets and throwing bycatch back and lobsters going back and menhaden and all kinds of whatever going back and they're used to feasting on it. So that nice loud noise of the boat, biggest fish came on the board right here. Fish on, fish on, fish on. Mike, Mike, go get it. Mike. Mike. <laughs> He's not in yet. Give a hard scoop forward, Mike. There you go. <laughs> Woo! Nice fish, man. Mike, what'd you do, bro? <laughs> Tim's going to show you our uh, method here. River dance, you gotta drum them in. Yeah. <laughs> We're a commercial boat. There's our buddy again, he's been circling us all day. <laughs> We've seen every angle of his boat, right? <laughs> Trying to sound like a commercial boat. <laughs> what is it, Tread Barter man? He'd bring the pots and pans out, stick them in the water and rattle the pots and pans together. God bless Tread Barter, he was the man. That's part I want to see.